Welcome back to Just Blazor Programming. Today we're going to be discussing Blazor United and the potential issues it might have, and specifically uh, one of the problems that I see coming. Because Blazor United is uh, basically a mixing of two hosting models, one of them being Blazor WebAssembly, one of them being Blazor Server. Now, doing this is spectacular because if you combine the two, that it means that you can use uh, the best of both worlds without compromising them. Unfortunately, this also means that you have to take into consideration the limitations that one of them has in order for you to use both of them. So that is uh, that's what I want to get into today. So, so yeah. So today, it's April 2023, and Blazor United still has not come out. We're still in .NET 7. Blazor United supposedly will come out in November of this year, but we still don't really have a preview version to work with. So this is just speculation, pure speculation. If you don't like this kind of video, then go watch other technical videos that I might have or other videos that I have about my opinions on Blazor and some issues and whatever it is. Sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're positive because, you know, Blazor, we got to be real with our tools. Anyways, the reason why I decided to make this video is because I'm actually working on a technical video for Blazor WebAssembly that has to do with this very same subject. It's just that things got in the way. Um, there's things I'm just working on. There's just a lot of stuff to do. I just can't, you know, it's just really difficult to concentrate on this. I'm really busy, but not too busy to at least make this video. Uh, lamenting the fact that I am working on a web, Blazor WebAssembly authentication authorization tutorial, essentially. And I found that it is actually a little bit more involved than I thought it would be. And there's a good reason for it. And because Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server are so different when it comes to this, um, I think this might be a potential issue for Blazor United because you are going to be given the ability, in theory, to switch between the uh, how you choose to render something. And that could impact um, the authorization authentication. Now, I could be completely wrong about this. I don't have my hands on Blazor United, and I don't think it's like uh, really good to look at the at the fork just yet that they have out there um, in order to see what could be the thing. Because who knows how far they've gone or how what they're planning to do with it. So instead, I'm just going to bring out my points on Blazor authentication and authorization when it comes uh, to Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server. So do that. So just a very quick reminder, Blazor United is planning on basically combining these two hosting models, you know, Blazor server on the left, and Blazor WebAssembly on the right, into, you know, one package so that you are able to choose which rendering uh, mode you want to use. That, that's how we saw in the example that uh, Steven Sanderson uh, put out. And if you want, you can watch a video from him directly, or you can watch the video that I made of that video. So either way, up to you. And also, apparently, it's going to give you the ability to uh, allow the program to choose which rendering model is best. I do not know how that's going to work. I'm not really sure. It will just automate it for you. And I don't know what parameters in which it's going to actually do that. You know, again, we don't have our hands on this stuff. We're just speculating the issues that might arise from combining these two. Now, if you have used Blazor Server, then you know that uh, authenticating with it or an authorization, uh, the authorization authentication scheme is actually really easy because SignalR is essentially handling that for you. And I also made a um, a video about that if you want to check that out. And in this case, if we go up here, uh, when it comes to Blazor server authentication, basically it's being handled by SignalR. Obviously, you have to code some stuff in there to make it do that. But at the end of the day, it's very straightforward when it comes to actually using the Blazor server authentication. Blazor WebAssembly is a different thing entirely. Blazor WebAssembly works like the Reacts, your Angulars, your Vue.js's of the world, in which um, it's just a client side, all the codes on the client side, and you cannot trust it and anything that the user has input for, because they could change anything on the actual front end if they feel like it. So that means you have to protect your endpoints, you have to protect uh, and your components, however you're going to protect them. You need a way to ensure um, you know, that the user is authorized and authenticated to use your application in however way you want. And it's very similar to, um, let me see if I go down here, it's very similar to Blazor server in which they're both using the authentication state provider to actually authorize the components. The, but how we get to the actual authentication piece with Blazor server, uh, oh, not Blazor server, Blazor WebAssembly, there are a lot of options. In fact, all these options here, 
that you have to choose. You cannot let uh, Blaze WebAssembly do it for you because it's not going to. So you have to choose between uh, either using uh, JWT, you know, JSON Web Tokens, which is something that is used by every other framework. So that's pretty good. Or you can use one of the third-party packages that it, you, that, it that brings in, which is Identity Server, or implement one of these other authentication schemes if you feel like it. Now, I want to do JWT because that seems to be the most common one that's, being, that's used basically everywhere. And then maybe later on, you go on something a little bit more uh, complex. But that means that you have to be the one to actually handle this code. That means that you have to be the one to keep this in mind when you go eventually go use Blazor United because now Blazor Server, you cannot use any of the SignalR stuff for this specific portion, for the Blazor WebAssembly portions. I do not know how they're going to tie these together either, um, considering that they're rendering and hosting uh uh, model is also a little bit different. Does it matter in their case? Will they wrap it up so that you are able to use one authentication method in your components and have that like, and then have the rendering within that somehow? Like, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, these are two di different, um, these are two different hosting models. Now uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. This is just something that I was thinking about as I was working on the uh, Blazor Authentication Authorization. Yes, I was working on it. I know what you saw with the Resident Evil stuff. I know that. And I am playing that game, and I want to finish it. But before that, I was actually working on the Authentication Authorization for Blazor WebAssembly. And I was running into, you know, some issues with it. Because everyone has their own take on it, and it's really annoying. So I'm trying to figure out a, a good way of maybe simplifying the process. But it does take some, you know, does take work to teach certain aspects of blaze WebAssembly authentication if i want to give it a, a decent tutorial that you know will allow you to do it yourself without having too many questions about what's going on that's what I, i've been trying to do and it might even come down to separating it into different videos uh, for the different parts of it because of the fact that essentially you're the one handling all the portions of it. The only thing that remains consistent between this and later the server, from what I can tell, is the fact that you're using the authorization, the authorized state component thing. Uh, you're basically using this, and I think they're both using it. Uh, but yeah, that's one of my worries when it comes to Blazor United. I love the fact, the idea of being able to, you know, spin up a Blazor server hosted or, or rendered a uh, page for the users so that they don't have to wait for the Blazor WebAssembly to load and then have the Blazor WebAssembly portion load as the Blazor server uh, stuff is just there for them so they can interact with it. But I care a lot about authorization authentication, and you should as well. And I don't know how you're going to mesh these two. These two don't really work together very well. I believe you can use OIDC for both of them, and you have to use like JSON Web Tokens on your own. But again, I'm just speculating here. And this is basically just a bit of frustration I was having, and I want to vent it out to you guys <laughs> and make some content out of it because I know I've been a little lax with it because, you know, certain events in my life have gone in the way. Just to, just saying, we got to save Ashley. Uh, and that game is really good. But I do think that this is actually... a decent food for thought when it comes to Blazor United. In fact, this is not going to be the only issues that Blazor has right now. And just to bring up something very quickly, um, I know that some people, at least from the comments, uh, there's some issues with the firewall. Um, I only bring this up because I have not experienced it myself. If you have experienced it, let me know because I could look into it a little bit more and make a dedicated video for it. But for the moment, I guess it's become like some corporate stuff that, that they don't allow DLLs or something. I don't know what's going on there. I have not had this issue uh, personally. So if you have any more, or if you have some examples I could see, that'd be great. And yes, so Blaze WebAssembly is probably going to be the, uh, when it comes to Blazor United, Blazor Web Assembly is probably going to be the main, like, foundation of most people who use Blazor United because they want to get all that, uh, you know, they just want to load up everything on the front end, but they don't want to have any of that loading cost. So they're going to use a Blazor server to uh, basically trick their, their people or tr trick their clients to thinking that everything's loaded when it's not. Sorry about that. But... You know, that's what the people want. Um, anyways, I know that ASP.NET Core has their own way of doing the authentication and authorization. I was just more curious about how to handle this with Blazor, especially since you're combining the two hosting models. 
Um, in the end of the day, I believe that you, we might be gravitating towards something just using ASP.NET Core or JWT, as you see here, and using it for both. So that might not be, maybe this is just making a mount on a bit of molehill. Blaze Web Assembly is a bit of annoying when it comes to uh, authentication authorization. It's not very simple. And uh, you have to deal with everything that you basically are seeing here. This is essentially all the ASP.NET Core authentication authorization. You have to do, build this um, and take care of Blazor Web Assembly, unlike Blazor Server, which was a breeze since it did everything for you. And that's just me venting out my frustrations there. And also, you know, warning that Blazor United might also run into the same problems. And then you're going to have to feel my frustration at some point in time. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they actually find a way to actually mesh this too. I do not know yet. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Anyways, uh, this was a quick one. Let me know what you think of the video. What problems have you been having, Blazor? And do you think that there's going to be some solutions for it? Or maybe something that streamlines this process a little bit better? Because, you know, uh, authentication authorization, absolute necessity for any web application that you're going to be building. And if we can make this process easier and more streamlined, that'd be fantastic. I know that JSON web tokens are something that uh, is ubiquitous among all web applications. Uh, basically, most of them use them. However, there should be maybe an easier way to implement this, especially since we're combining two different hosting models for Blazor at least. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot, quickie, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully by then, that'll be the Blazor WebAssembly tutorial video, but who knows.